Good morning. I'm going to be talking about a discerning of spirits. This is a spiritual gift that you and I can operate in. The Lord tells us to ask him, ask him for different gifts. And uh, he says if you ask him boldly or persistently or insistently, you'll get it. Really, it's just waiting to be operated in by you. This is our benefit. This is our inheritance. The servants of the Lord have been given the Holy Spirit by Jesus. He attained that when he, when he made uh, the ascension into heaven. At the ascension, he attained the sending of the Holy Spirit. Jesus baptized people in the Holy Spirit only after he ascended into heaven. He cannot exist in the flesh on this earth uh, with, the, with the Paracletos Holy Spirit. The Paracletos, of course, is the that Holy Spirit that um, pours out on all flesh. It's the same nature as the Holy Spirit in the um, Old Testament, but it is... Uh, poured out on all flesh. It has the same nature as the Holy Spirit and the, uh, the Ruach in the Old Testament, but it is poured out on all flesh, which means that in the New Testament, uh, e even children can operate in the spiritual gifts, and I've known them do that. Now, the gift of a discerning of spirits is not discernment. It's what it says it is, a discerning of spirits. You are enabled to see the truth of what spirit is behind when a person speaking or when some advent of, or, or, or some community is being moved by a certain spirit or a person is being moved by a certain spirit. You, you're able to see it and um, discern it, rather. You can't. Uh, sometimes you can visualize these things. Other times you just know it in your heart what's going on. A discerning of spirits discerns good and evil spirits, angels and demons. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It comes upon you. You could be struggling to understand something, maybe somebody acting very strangely, uh, but then you suddenly know what's going on in your heart. That's the gift operating. A very important gift operating. One time, I, I oversee various ministries, and one particular ministry in Africa. Um, it's, it's a large ministry now, but I was with it when it began. And that ministry uh, always on my heart. I'm a director of it, and I, I, I continued always to hold it in my heart. And one night, the Lord uh, woke me up and said, there's an evil spirit moving on that on that ministry. So I prayed about it and prayed. I didn't get any uh, clarity on it, but I just knew there's an evil spirit coming upon that ministry now. So I contacted them and I said, what's going on? Oh, no, nothing. Everything's fine. Uh, we've got the board operating and next week we're going to have another board meeting and everything's fine, I said. You see, well, I said, well, no, it's not. I can tell you that. There's something very bad going on. Okay. Now, the next week, when they had that board meeting, the board decided to send them away for a year and take over the ministry and uh, basically kick them out. And, of course, the board was not competent and not called by God and not in a full-time ministry capacity. They were just um, people who had helped out and uh, but now they're wanting to take over and they gave them some money they gave the, the the people in charge that I deal with some money and sent them out the country and I said and when when I contacted them again I said well now what's going on oh the board has sent us on a holiday uh, and but when they get onto that holiday the board tells them to stay there for nine months <laughs> and took over the ministry completely, you see. And uh, it was evil. 
And so I contacted the board and said, you can't do that. Um, these people are called to that ministry, not you. You're just uh, amateurs. You're just helping out. You're an advisory board. Well, we said, no, we're not. We're an executive board now. And uh, I said, well, I've been on that board from the beginning. And uh, I say to you that the Lord has not called you to do this. This is very wrong. Oh, well, we find fault in, in the couple that are running this ministry and they need help and they kicked them out basically and took over. They said to them, you can't do that. And then they got very angry with me and they said, we're going to fire you, Pastor Phil. I said, you can't do that. God appointed me to that place, not you. And I said, in fact, God tells me you're fired. And basically, they took over, ruined the place for about two weeks. I had to convince the couple that were leading it um, uh, to, to go back. I said, you, you can't leave your post. God hasn't released you. You must go back and do what is right and take the reins of that ministry back again. See, when they got back, all the money had gone from the ministry. They had orphans, like 90 orphans, and there's no food, there's no, nothing. And uh, even the engines had been damaged with sugar, and the, and the pipes had been ripped up that brought the water to the, to the place. Um, very bad and evil things happened, all in the name of Christianity. And of course, because I was involved, and because God showed me by a discerning of spirits that there was an evil spirit moving on that ministry, I was able to prevent its collapse and its demise because certainly that board was incompetent and not called by God to run that place. But they lusted after it and envied after it and made a political choice to get rid of the, the leaders. And they always had a good reason, but it wasn't of God. And this is very important to know that who God appoints and who God calls, that's the ones that build, not the ones that men appoint and men call. They might build some kind of church or club or something, but they don't build God's kingdom. God calls people to build his kingdom. He's not a beggar, and he doesn't need flesh to help him to do what the Spirit should be doing. We are building a kingdom of spirits and spirit values, we're not building a kingdom of flesh. People think the church is, you know, the assemblies of God or the Methodist or the Anglican church or the Catholic church. It is not. The church of Jesus Christ is made up of true believers, and it's totally unified by the one fact that it is connected to the head called Jesus Christ. And all those who are not connected to the head are not in his church. It's very simple. On this rock, i.e., the revelation of Jesus Christ. I will build my church and the governments of hell will not prevail against it, and not upon the rock of human uh, management or mismanagement and, uh, and, and, and administrations. These things are human, they're not uh, of God. God requires no one, but he, he includes us in his plan. Praise the Lord. Uh, the discerning of spirits gift is very important. Sometimes I can tell by the Holy Spirit that a pastor is lying to me because I, know I, can, I can just sense that lying spirit. Uh, I can, uh, you know, I look at a person's face on a photograph and knew that they had AIDS. How did I know that? You see, the photograph just showed me the face, but I knew, and I was right. You see, a discerning of spirits can see things. Um, it's, it's evil equivalent to be clairvoyancy or something, but it can see things. It can see spirits. It can see good and evil. It can see the real spirit that's moving on a person uh, and causing them to fight or to do something um, which is unexplainable to the human mind. But discerning spirits can see what the problem is. When you can see the problem, you can deal with it according to the, to the, uh, the, the weapons that we have, we can get rid of uh, the, the enemy. 
But if you can't discern that it's the enemy, then how can you fight it? And how can you get rid of it? And how can you cast out demons if you can't see them or even sense that they're there? This is a very important gift in the New Testament and one that we can all uh, operate in if we believe and ask him according to Luke chapter 11. God bless you.